The director of catering for the House of Commons says it's impossible to only buy British when it comes to crockery, as EU law means they can't select products just because they're made in Britain. Ruth Smeaths told BBC Radio Stoke she's appalled that last year nearly £18,000 was spent on 700 pieces of crockery, but over half of it was manufactured abroad. John Plant, who's director of Moreland's Pottery, says the House of Commons should be buying from Stoke-on-Trent. I think they should use as much as they possibly can if they can source the particular type of pottery in Stoke. There's certainly lots of product, I'm sure, that could go into the House of Commons that was solely made in Stoke-on-Trent. I think it would be great if it was 100% made in Stoke. I mean, that would be a brilliant thing for Stoke-on-Trent. I'm back in Britain. Do you remember Jackie Trent wrote this? Talk about local product. Uh, Yes, this is the big campaign from the 60s, the late 60s, early 70s. And we're back here, in a sense, with these thoughts from uh, Stoke-on-Trent North MP Ruth Smith. She was more than a little shocked to find out how much Staffordshire pottery was not being used in the mother of all parliaments, our very own Houses of Parliament. This is what she told John Akers on BBC Radio Stoke this morning. In the most important, iconic building in the country where we have international visitors every day, where trade deals are done, especially post-Brexit, you turn your plate over, chances are, as you said, that any of the new crockery might not have been made in the UK. So uh, I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention because as we leave the European Union, everything's up for grabs. And whether it's the tableware that we serve, whether it's um, the tiles as we restore the building, whether it's um, the bricks, everything is now up for grabs. And I want to make sure that they're buying from Stoke-on-Trent. Ruth, there are only plates and cups and saucers. Surely it doesn't matter. They're jobs. So they are both plates, cups and saucers, but as you know, um, there is nothing better than when you turn over a plate than finding out it was made in our city. It's not just plates and saucers, uh, and cups, uh, plates and saucers, it's jobs, she says. Well, Jonathan Plant from Moreland's Pottery agrees. I think it's important that, you know, that they're given the fair chance. I mean, as that gentleman just said, they're all uh, competing against each other and whoever wins the tender will get the job. But, you know, Steelite and, and uh, Dudson and uh, Churchill are amongst the best tableware, hotelware manufacturers in the world. So I would think they should have as good a chance as anyone. And, and if anything, it should be in there. Certainly. I'm back in Britain. Yes, I'm back in Britain. We're all back in Britain today. Well, what about this blind allegiance to buying British? Uh, do you do it? Do you check before you buy something that it is British? And should we? Should we perhaps possibly even spend extra pounds uh, to buy British goods, British food? British wares. Today we're asking, should we be buying British? Stoke-on-Trent North MP Ruth Smith was uh, more than a little shocked, as I've mentioned already and as we've heard already, to find that in uh, the mother of all parliaments, the Houses of Parliament, uh, when she turned her plate over, good to see she's a plate flipper, uh, that uh, it didn't have a Stoke-on-Trent back stamp or foreign stuff. Well, should we be accepting this? Or indeed, should we expect the people who are spending our taxes to go for the lowest cost, to be efficient? If it's cheaper abroad, then so be it. That's a free market economy. Where do you stand on this one? Should we buy British? Uh, I'd like to speak to Kate Hills, first of all. She's from Make It British. Hello, Kate. Hello. Did you hear, Hello. Me, did you hear my uh, blast of uh, We're Back in Britain, the old Bruce Forsyth song? Yes, I love it. <laughs> Apart from the problem with that campaign, the T-shirts they had printed up weren't actually made in Britain. Portugal, wasn't it? I think they came yes, from. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, it, it was ever thus. So tell me this, uh, Kate, why should we buy British? Well, I mean, the obvious answer is it supports British jobs and it supports British industry. Um, and if our own government can't, um, if you know, if they say that they they want to support British industry and they want to grow that um, that part of the economy, why can their procurement departments not follow suit? Because it costs money. 
Well, I would argue it's not always more expensive to um, buy product made in the UK. I think your chap on earlier met- mentioned Steelite, a fantastic um, you know, pottery company in, in, in Stoke, and um, easily um, as affordable as, as products from China, especially when you factor in the, the shipping and the duty and everything. Um, plus, it, you know, it helps prop up the local economy. So, so, so what's that's your, what they should be doing. What's your best guess as to what's going wrong then, Kate? Well, they're obviously um, the organ grinder is not speaking to the monkey. Maybe I think they, the the chaps that stand up in Parliament who say that we should be supporting British industry and that they're doing so should pass that um, down to the rest of their team and to their procurement department. But I mean, wouldn't that be wouldn't that be petty day to day meddling in something that actually should be left to experts? And if the the people in procurement at the Houses of Parliament have their mechanisms for deciding who's the best supplier, maybe we should just let them get on with it. Well, maybe, but maybe they're not as well informed. I think the problem is a lot of people think that we've got no industry left in the UK. So so maybe they're not aware of all their British-made options. I mean, certainly when I started Make It British, you know, nearly a decade ago, people were saying to me, we don't make anything in the UK anymore, but, mm. but we really do. You just have to look quite hard to find it sometimes. But then is- maybe that's Steelite's fault. Maybe that's Churchill's fault. They need to speak louder. They need to uh, work more on their marketing department, perhaps. Maybe, I mean, that's why, you know, there's campaigns like mine exist. I, I certainly think Steelite should be knocking on the doors of the Houses of Parliament now and um, showing what they're made of. Should we buy British even if it is more expensive? Is it, let me put this another way. Are we right to assume that it's going to be better quality just because it's British? No, not always. N- not always, no. But the, the more you buy from the, from the UK, the more... Com- you know, manufacturers here will invest in the newest, fastest machinery, and and the higher volume that we make here, the, the more we can bring the prices down. Um, if we start, you know, becoming a man of proper manufacturing company again, and we do stand for quality products, then then we you know we'll sell more, and by making more, then they can afford to lower the price. Is it all, all a little irrelevant? This now, you, I mean, Ruth Smith said uh, it's about jobs. You mentioned jobs too. Actually, the true enemy of jobs especially blue collar jobs manufacturing jobs the true energy is te- enemy is technology it's not foreign competition but I think you can use technology to your advantage in manufacturing. And, and the best manufacturers in the UK are using technology to make their manufacturing you know, some of the best in the world. You've only got to look at things like our car industry. Well, yeah, I do. And I've, I've seen footage of uh, production lines in the car industry and it's full of robots doing jobs that, that men used to do before. That is technology. But then you've got the men program, programming and inventing the robots. Yeah, I guess so. But once that's done, it's done, isn't it? I mean, um, well, let's, let's go I, with the I'm numbers. I'm not a robotics expert. No, exactly. But... Neither am I. But let's go with the numbers. The, the whole point of having a robot is it will work 24-7. It won't go out on strike. You don't need to give it holiday pay or sick pay, uh, nor do you have to give it a pension. I mean, it, the human beings are actually a, a burden in the modern workplace, aren't they? I don't think so. You still need the human beings for the research and the development, and more time can be spent on that. You need the, the, the back office staff. Um, robots are not going to take over the whole world, what, not let, in manufacturing anyway. Let me just see you back to Ruth Smith's interview uh, earlier today with uh, John Akers here at BBC Radio Stoke. Uh, and the part of the problem with procurement within Parliament is the fact that uh, the contracting authority involved, uh, as specified in the European Parliament and uh, Council Directors, said we are subject to EU public sector procurement directives. Uh, to quote the the person in charge it is therefore impossible for us to demand that we wish to buy only british products simply on the merits of origin instead we must ensure our products uh, at the tender stage and ultimately our decision to award contract does not discriminate against products or suppliers from other eu member states what do you make of that Right. Well, I suppose that is the reason that a lot of people don't want anything to do with the EU anymore, um, because they don't necessarily want people dictating um, what we, we what we can and can't procure in the UK. I mean, I do know that there was a something tried to go through um, by the EU a while ago, saying that you couldn't label something as made in Britain; it had to be made in the EU. No one took a blind bit of notice of it. Um, is that, hang on a minute. Is that where's that from then? 
that was a few years ago when they... Um, Isn't it one when, of these uh, sort of Daily Mail Sun headlines? Is, is, is no, that... no, it, there very much was a bill that they were trying to put through right, okay. um, in EU Parliament saying that things had to be labelled as made in the EU. Right. Now, I, I know a lot of people want to support locally made products. Um, and then certainly the Germans were, weren't having any of it when the EU tried to put in a made in EU label into everything because they're very proud of what they make in Germany. For some reason in the UK, we, not everyone has the same pride. Um, with the EU question, though, actually, there's an upside to this. If our parliament and, and other procurers within the UK are compelled to uh, be fair to other EU member states, then presumably it's the same in Spain, it's the same in France, it's the same in Germany, and Britain will benefit from that. I think so, but I think also there's things that the, U, that the UK want to be known for and, know, and known for making well. You know, Stoke and the Potteries, for instance. And I know that, um, you know, made in Stoke is, is very important to people that live in Stoke. And, and they would hate to have to put made in the EU on the bottom of their, on their pottery because people like to know the origin of something. And I think that even more so now, provenance and origin and heritage are really important to consumers. What, just before I let you go, Kay Sills, you're from Make It British. Tell me a bit about Make It British. Is, are you a, a publicising body or are you a campaigning body as well? And if so, what's your aims? Well, I'm a, I'm a one-woman campaigner trying to get more people. My, my background is actually in buying and procurement. And I could see that it was quite short-term to just be sourcing all our products overseas because we were losing the skills that were left in the UK. So I set up Make It British to promote and, and, and talk about and shout about the fantastic things that we still make here and to make everyone aware that Made in Britain is still really important. OK. Kate Hills, great to speak to you. Thanks for coming on. A pleasure. Thank you.